As a single dad, every financial decision that I make could quite literally change the trajectory of my financial future. And over the years, I have identified common habits that a lot of people struggle with. So I wanted to share nine habits that keep people poor and how you can overcome those habits. Plus, if you stay till the end, I've included a bonus one that I think is super important. I wanted to start with what I believe is the most important habit and this is poor or unhealthy lifestyle choices. For some people, what they eat and how they live their lives is not by choice, but what they can afford. So I sympathize for those who are really struggling to make ends meet. But for most of us, we have the privilege of choices on what we eat and how we go about our daily lives. So I wanted to share my thoughts on the ways that living an unhealthy lifestyle can hinder our financial situation. Lack of exercise and an unhealthy diet can lead to chronic health conditions. Managing and treating these conditions can be expensive, resulting in high medical bills. This will really affect those living below the poverty level as they will have to make the choice as to whether they can afford the expense, take on debt to cover the costs, or just not be able to do anything at all because they don't have the money. So poor health can affect the disadvantaged 10 times more than the average person. An unhealthy lifestyle can lead to lower energy levels, reduced focus and increased sick days. This can hinder your ability to perform well at work, potentially affecting your income. Serious health issues can force individuals to retire earlier than planned, leading to a reduced income during retirement years. So how can we improve our health and in turn reduce the associated costs? Incorporate physical activity into your daily routine. It doesn't have to be intense, Even a daily walk can make a difference in your health and energy levels. Opt for a well-balanced diet with plenty of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Reducing the consumption of processed foods and sugary drinks can improve your overall health. Schedule regular checkups with healthcare professionals. Detecting and addressing health issues early can prevent them from becoming more severe and costly. My number two on the list is leveraging too much debt. Excessive debt can be a significant financial burden and carrying a large amount of debt, especially high interest credit card debt, means paying substantial interest charges over time. This can eat into your income and make it challenging to save or invest. High debt levels can also limit your ability to respond to unexpected financial emergencies or opportunities. You may find yourself unable to cover urgent expenses without taking on more debt. But what are some ways we can pay off debt fast and become debt free? You need to start by tracking your income and expenses to understand your financial situation. Allocate a portion of your income to debt repayment and stick to a budget to avoid accumulating more debt. Two popular methods for paying off debt are the debt snowball and debt avalanche. In the debt snowball method, you pay off the smallest debt first, gaining momentum. In the avalanche method, you tackle the debt with the highest interest rate first, In my personal opinion, I think the debt snowball is the most effective as the psychology of gaining momentum with small wins will keep you motivated. You can also consider finding ways to boost your income, such as taking on a side gig or putting your hand up for overtime. The extra income can be directed towards debt repayment, accelerating the process. Number three on the list is not having an emergency fund. This is so important and can have financial repercussions. Here are some examples of how it can keep people in a precarious financial situation. Without an emergency fund, unexpected expenses like medical bills or car repairs may force individuals to rely on credit cards or loans to cover these costs leading to debt accumulation. A lack of emergency savings means you're vulnerable to financial shocks like job loss, pandemics, or anything else that might force you to lose your income. Without a safety net, it can be challenging to cover basic living expenses during periods of unemployment. 
Also, funds used for emergencies can't be invested in assets that generate returns. Over time, this missed opportunity for growth can hinder wealth building and financial progress. Here's an example of how someone on a low budget can save three to six months of expenses. Let's say your monthly expenses total $2,000. Saving three to six months worth of expenses would be between $6,000 and $12,000. On a tight budget, you can achieve this by making savings a non-negotiable part of your budget. Allocate a fixed portion of your income, even if it's a small amount, towards your emergency fund. And identify areas where you can cut back on discretionary spending, such as dining out or entertainment redirect that money saved into your emergency fund. Look for opportunities to increase your income, like taking on part-time work, freelancing, or selling items you no longer need. Use the extra income exclusively for your emergency fund. By consistently saving and making adjustments to your budget, even individuals with limited resources can build an emergency fund over time, providing valuable financial security. Personally, I hate credit cards and will never use them. And I see a lot of content online about how good they are, but I like to keep things simple and not have to worry about payments, debt, or interest and fees. Certainly credit cards and bonus points can be enticing, but they can also lead to a mountain of debt. Here are some examples of how people can get trapped into credit card debt through rewards and bonus points. Some individuals may overspend on their credit cards in pursuit of rewards and bonus points. They might make unnecessary purchases or spend beyond their means to reach spending thresholds for rewards, leading to accumulating more debt. And if users don't pay their credit card balances in full each month, the high interest rates on unpaid balances can quickly offset any rewards earned. This can result in a cycle of debt as interest accumulates. So relying heavily on credit cards for daily expenses without tracking spending can lead to a false sense of financial security. Users may not realize the extent of their debt until it becomes unmanageable. And remember, the rewards on these credit cards don't last forever secretly enticing you to get the next fancy card with rewards, keeping you in their never ending cycle of debt and repayments. So how can we avoid the use of credit cards? Use cash or debit cards for everyday expenses instead of credit cards. This can help you stay within your budget since you're spending money you actually have. Build and maintain an emergency fund to cover unexpected expenses so that you're not reliant on credit cards in times of financial crisis. And learn about the pitfalls of credit cards and how interest rates work. Understanding the risks associated with credit card use can help you make more informed financial decisions. Number five on my list is not having a budget. With around 46% of Australians living paycheck to paycheck, here's some examples of how people might come unstuck Without a budget, individuals may not track their expenses or have a clear understanding of their income versus expenditures. This can result in overspending, leaving little room for saving or unexpected expenses. Budgets are essential for setting and achieving financial goals. Without one, people may struggle to save for retirement, pay off debt or achieve other financial milestones. Not having a budget can lead to financial uncertainty and stress. When individuals don't know where their money is going or how they'll cover their bills, it can take a toll on their overall well-being. So how can you create a budget that works? Begin by recording all sources of, it, of income and tracking every expense, no matter how small. This provides a clear picture of your financial situation. Group expenses into categories like housing, transportation, groceries, and entertainment. This helps identify areas where you can cut back or reallocate funds. Establish financial goals such as saving for a vacation or paying off debt. 
allocate a portion of your income towards these goals in your budget to ensure you're making progress. Creating a budget tailored to your financial goals and lifestyle can help you manage your finances effectively. Avoid overspending and work toward a more secure financial future. Certainly unrealistic social media content can have negative financial implications. Here are three examples of how following unrealistic social media accounts can impact people's financial well-being. Seeing others flaunt lavish lifestyles on social media can lead to unhealthy comparisons. People may feel pressured to spend beyond their means to keep up with unrealistic standards of living. Social media often features advertisements and sponsored content that can trigger impulse buying behavior. Users might make unplanned purchases influenced by what they see online. Constant exposure to extravagant experiences and possessions can discourage saving for long-term goals. People may prioritize short-term gratification over financial security and delayed gratification. How can we use social media more positively? Seek out social media accounts of financial experts and educators who provide practical information on budgeting, investing, saving, and the ones that have proven track record of providing good financial information. Their content can help you make informed financial decisions. Be mindful of accounts you follow. Unfollow or mute accounts that consistently make you feel inadequate or trigger impulsive spending tendencies and promote scam-like products. Use social media to share your financial goals and progress. It can create a sense of accountability and support from your online community, helping you stay on track. By curating your social media feed to include positive and educational content and using it as a platform to connect with like-minded individuals pursuing financial goals. You can use social media as a tool for financial empowerment rather than detriment. A negative mindset can indeed impact one's financial situation. Now I'm not saying that just thinking positively will make you rich. When I talk about having a negative mindset, I mean by not having a growth mindset. Not wanting to have a mindset where you want to learn and become successful in all aspects of your life. So here are some examples of how a negative mindset can keep people in a poor financial state. Negative self-talk and limiting beliefs about money can hinder financial growth. Believing that you'll never earn more or that you're destined to be in debt can become self-fulfilling prophecies. A negative mindset can lead to procrastination when it comes to financial decisions. Delaying, budgeting, investing or seeking a better job or life opportunities can result in missed financial opportunities. Being overly risk averse due to fear can prevent individuals from making calculated financial decisions. This aversion can risk. This aversion to risk can lead to missed opportunities that could grow wealth over time. So how can we improve our mindset and develop a more positive attitude towards finances? Focus on what you have rather than what you lack regularly expressing gratitude for your current financial situation can shift your mindset from scarcity to abundance. Knowledge is empowering. Invest time in learning about personal finance, investing and wealth building strategies. The more you know, the more confident and positive you'll become about your financial future. Break down your financial goals into smaller achievable milestones. Celebrate your successes along the way, which can boost your confidence and your motivation. By actively working on changing negative thought patterns, seeking financial education and setting realistic goals, you can improve your mindset and make more positive financial decisions. And number six is relying solely on one job or career and how it can have financial limitations. Here are some examples of how relying on one job can affect your financial situation. Depending on a single job means that your income is vulnerable to factors like layoffs, 
economic downturns or industry specific challenges. This instability can lead to financial stress during tough times. Some jobs may have limited earning potential or slow salary growth. Relying solely on this income source can hinder your ability to increase your overall earnings. Depending on one source of income doesn't provide diversification in your financial portfolio. This lack of diversity can leave you more exposed to financial risks. So here are some ways people can create multiple sources of income. Start a part-time job or side business in addition to your primary job. Side hustles can include freelancing, consulting, or selling products or services online. Invest in assets like ETF, index funds, bonds, real estate, or mutual funds. These investments can generate passive income through dividends, interest, or rental income. Explore opportunities to generate passive income such as writing a book, creating an online course, or building a blog or YouTube channel that generates advertising revenue. By diversifying your income streams, you can increase your financial stability, grow your wealth, and become less reliant on a single job or career for your financial well-being. Certainly being a consumer rather than a creator can have financial consequences, so identifying this will leave you to make more conscious choices. Here are some examples of how it can keep people in a financially disadvantaged position. Consumers primarily spend money on products and services, which deplete their resources. They often rely on fixed income from jobs without exploring avenues to create additional income streams. Consumers depend on businesses and employers to meet their needs. They may not have control over the pricing quality or availability of the products and services they consume, making them vulnerable to external factors. By not actively engaging in creating value or businesses, individuals may miss out on opportunities to build wealth through entrepreneurship, inventions or innovations. So how can you become a creator rather than a consumer? Start a business or side venture based on your skills interests or passions entrepreneurship allows you to create products or services that can generate income and potentially grow over time explore creative outlets like blogging vlogging or podcasting sharing your knowledge or experiences through content creation can attract an audience and generate income through advertising sponsorships or merchandise sales Invest in acquiring new skills or expertise that can be monetized. Learning how to code, mastering a craft, or gaining proficiency in a sought after industry can open doors to income generating opportunities. By actively seeking ways to create value, provide solutions, or share knowledge, individuals can shift from being consumers to becoming creators which can lead to financial growth and independence. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I chuck in a bonus habit that should really get some consideration, and that's not understanding cycles and external factors. So here's an explanation of what I mean. Property locations, food price increases, and insurance costs can lead to unexpected expenses. Ignoring economic cycles may result in poor investment timing, buying assets at the wrong time, and making bad financial decisions just before a financial collapse. And lastly, industries can become inaccessible due to technological advancements or shift in consumer preferences, potentially leading to job loss or reduced income opportunities. Being informed about these external factors and their potential financial implications is essential for making informed decisions and adapting to changing circumstances. 
ultimately contributing to financial stability and security. I've done a video on how to predict the next financial crisis, which explains this a bit more, which I will leave at the end of this video. Let me know if any of these habits have affected you in the past or right now. Well, I hope this video has helped you and I will see you on the next one. Peace.